Hello everybody, this is Victor Echo 6 Whiskey Golf Mike here with you. So in my last video, I um, showed everybody a formula that can be used to calculate the characteristic impedance of a coax cable where the impedance is equal to the square root of the measured inductance over the measured capacitance. And I also directed you to go to the 90 degree phase angle uh, on the chart shown on the vector network analyzer so that you stay away from that resonant point that's found on um, on coax cables. Um, the question I had was is when you go to the 90 degree point and you make that measurement because this is is been calibrated to a 50 ohm um, non-reactive standard which is this point here if we go down to the 90 degree point and then uh, for the capacitive side then we short the end out and it goes positive to inductive are we going to see 50 ohms no matter what we're measuring so the question I asked myself is, is does this method actually work what happens if we've got a bad piece of cable is it are we just fooling ourselves into believing that we're actually getting some kind of a legitimate number out of this thing or are we um, are we uh, uh, getting an accurate reading so here's what I've done is is I've calibrated the nano VNA using the Cal standards right off the ports here and then I've gone and I've found a chunk of RG11 coax cable uh, let me just show you here this is Belden Where is it? There it is. Okay, so that's a Belden RG11, and that is a characteristic impedance of 75 ohms. So let's go ahead and test the method that I've shown you to see if it holds water, and um, then it'll give me a little more confidence in knowing that I'm not leading a bunch of people astray with, uh, with information that's inaccurate. So I've gone ahead and written the formula down and um, I've got the cable hooked up and the end of it is open and now I've got the um, the vector network analyzer set up so that uh, we've got 500 kilohertz as the low and 30 megahertz as the high and we seem to have not a bad graph here this is the resonant point I was telling you to avoid so we want to go to the 90 degree um, phase area of the graph see if we can get that in focus there and I've gone ahead and done that already. So at 90 degrees, and we are open on the end of the cable, so we're reading capacitive. The reading that I'm seeing is approximately 280 picofarads. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. Square root, uh, 280 picofarads. And we are going to short the end of the cable and read the inductive portion okay so I've gone ahead and shorted the end of the cable and now we notice that instead of moving completely to the opposite side of the Smith chart at positive 90 degrees it's actually rotated around to the 50 degree part part point um, 49.85 degrees uh, let's look at the capacity or to the uh, at the inductive reading here one and a half micro henrys so I'm going to write that down 1.5 micro henrys and then we're going to do the math here and if we pull oh, let's uh, adjust that there so if we pull our formula down and then we go and plug in those values. Let's see, so this is our inductive side. So we're gonna go one and a half micro Henry's. So that would be 10 to the negative six. And our capacitance was 280 picofarads, which is 10 to the negative 12, that's right. And we read a characteristic impedance of 73.193 ohms. So what this tells me is, is that um, it raises my level of confidence uh, with regards to this method of measuring the um, characteristic impedance of coax cable. And um, yeah, so here's the other thing. 
before I had a vector network analyzer, if I wanted to measure characteristic impedance of a coax cable, what I would do is I would use a time domain uh, reflectometer setup using my um, oscilloscope and a pulse generator. And uh, I would connect a variable load, like a, a potentiometer, to the end of the coax cable and watch for a uh, specific uh, pattern to emerge on the uh, oscilloscope display that would indicate to me that I have matched the load of the uh, variable resistor to the characteristic impedance of the cable. At that point, then what you do is you simply take an ohmmeter and you read the, uh, the value of that variable resistor, the potentiometer, and that is your characteristic impedance of your cable. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that method. Um, I'm going to set it up here and I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so I've got my TDR gear set up here. And there's nothing special about it. This is an old signal generator I bought when I was in college back in the 90s, early 90s. And I've got it set for 100 kilohertz output and square wave. And this old girl actually has a fast enough rise time that it uh, works um, for, for use in a time domain reflectometer application. Uh, this is a very inexpensive 20 megahertz battery operated oscilloscope I bought. I carry this in my toolkit at work for um, diagnosing certain things. Uh, it's come in very handy. Um, take a look here. I've got this set up for a sweep time of 100 nanoseconds and you can see that I'm I'm sending a pulse um, so the signal generator is connected through a T uh, this is sampling the for forward and uh, reflected pulse and out to the coax I go and send that pulse down along the length of the coax. It comes out this end here um, and then of course because I don't have a good termination here that signal just bounces right back and we can see that. So this is the initial pulse that I'm sending with the signal generator and then there's a time delay as it travels down the the uh, coax cable and then another length of time as it travels back and then we can see the arrival of that pulse when it arrives back at the at the uh, source here so the the distant the difference in time from when we sent the pulse I've set a marker here until the pulse comes back happens to work out to 336 nanoseconds Now, if you take 336 nanoseconds, um, divide that by two because the unit, the uh, pulse has traveled twice down the cable, so we only want to know the cable length one direction. Um, what's happened here is, is that the um, this pulse travels almost at the speed of light down the cable and bounces back. Now, this, this coax cable, it's RG213, and the... Um, the velocity factor of that cable is equal to 0 0.66 times the speed of light. So when the pulse uh, enters that RG213 coax, it actually slows down a little bit. So we need to take that into account in our calculation. So in order for us to calculate the one-way time for that trip down the coax cable, uh, we're going to have to take the two-way trip time and divide by 2 obviously 336 nanoseconds divided by 2 and that gives us 168 nanoseconds now I've gone ahead and uh, written down some a couple other things here the velocity factor of the cable I mentioned earlier it's 0.66 speed of light is 9.836 times 10 to the 8th feet per second I've chosen this because it makes the calculation easier to calculate how long the length of the cable is in feet and so we've if you drop down here you can see 9.836 times 10 to the 8 feet per second times the one-way trip time times the velocity factor of the cable and that's going to give us our answer. So let's go ahead and plug those numbers into the calculator. So we've got, uh, let's just clear things up here a bit. Okay, so we're able to see things here. 
we've got 9.836 times 10 to the 8th. And we're going to put brackets around that to isolate it. Now we're going to add the time, which we calculated was 168 nanoseconds. So that would be times 10 to the negative millimicro nano. Nano is negative 9. We're going to put that those in brackets as well, just to separate these terms and make sure the calculator doesn't uh, get confused as to what I want to do. And now we're going to multiply by the velocity factor of 0 0.66. And when we do that, we come up with a cable length of 109 feet. Okay, so I can tell you that the cable that we're measuring is in fact in the order of 109 feet. It's pretty darn close anyhow. There's a couple other things um, that we can easily gather from looking at this. So if you notice that the vertical amount of, this is about two divisions here. This one is not quite two divisions. So that is the loss of, of the signal as it's going down the cable and coming back. So in theory, if we look at this close enough, we could probably figure out what kind of loss we're seeing on this cable. The other interesting okay. thing is that if we see th this transition right here, uh, this step, it's caused because of a mismatch at the end of the cable. So we can actually use this along with a variable resistor placed at the end of the cable to determine the characteristic impedance of that cable. So what I'm going to do is go and adjust this potentiometer and you're going to see that that, oops, I have to hook it up first actually. So give me a half a second here. Okay, you can see that the amplitude has dropped a little bit here and that's because I've gone and placed this resistor at the end of the coax cable and uh, this is absorbing some of the energy that's coming off the end of the coax. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this potentiometer. Okay, I think I'm going the wrong way. And if you... Oh, no, that's going higher. So we're getting worse. And, oh, there it's coming down. Oops, and we are slowly moving towards no longer having any reflection coming back. And when that point happens, that is, you can see there's nothing coming back now. That is the point at which this resistor matches the characteristic impedance of this coax cable and nothing is being reflected down the cable. So now all we do is, is we simply disconnect the potentiometer from the coax cable and we measure it with a multimeter. We measure the resistance and that will tell us the characteristic impedance of the coax. Okay, so I've gone ahead and disconnected the alligator leads from the coax cable and I've connected them to the leads of my multimeter and we are reading 49.48 ohms. I guess one thing I should have shown you was um, what the pulse looks like straight out of the signal generator into the scope and not hooked up to anything. So if we go ahead and plug our coax cable in, you'll see that it now shows us the initial rise and then the reflection. So I've shown you now a few different ways that I've discovered and I, I guess I can't really take claim, make claim to this as being my discovery, but I've personally discovered these methods um, just based on my own um, investigations over the past little while and uh, willing to share these things with you. I hope that I understand the concepts well enough that um, I'm not giving inaccurate information. Um, I'm still learning a little bit about the Smith chart as I go as well. So um, 
I'm quite certain that I'll discover things that I thought I had figured out and I'll have to reevaluate later on as I go. But that's okay. That's all part of the learning process. Um, one of the things I like to do as I go, though, is to try to come up with ways to prove uh, what it is I think I've learned and th thereby um, coming up with a, a little bit more of a confident um, opinion about the methods that I've been working on here and using to gather information, such information as the characteristic impedance of coax cables, uh, coax cable lengths, um, coax cable loss, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to use these practically, these methods, uh, when I'm actually involved in um, such things as field day or other activities with uh, amateur radio and uh, yeah anyhow so you know um, one takeaway I have from this whole thing is is that it really doesn't take a lab full of really expensive equipment to be able to make some measurements so go ahead and play around I mean this stuff is really low tech look at this alligator clips and I'm doing everything I shouldn't be doing with RF but it seems to work and I think the reason why is because uh, you know, when I'm dealing with HF signals, um, they're pretty forgiving. So don't be afraid to experiment and play and see what happens. And then uh, maybe document your own discoveries and share them with the rest of us. And uh, we'll all learn together. Anyhow, have a good one. This is Victor Echo 6, Whiskey Golf Mike, and I hope you've enjoyed the videos.